Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about formation of the extra embryonic membranes in cheek. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So in embryos that have an external food supply, the formation of the extra embryonic membranes is essential to their survival. So for those embryos who have the external food supply, those embryos need to build the extra embryonic membranes and it is required for their survival. The embryo of cheek possesses four extra embryonic membranes those are yolk sac, allantois, amnion and chorion. So first we will see in this picture then we will talk about the nodes. So in cheek from the time of gastrulation onwards the outer area opaca expands over the surface of the yolk as an extra embryonic membrane so this is the area this is the area where the area opaca is there so it is getting expanded like this and like this so it is getting expanded over the surface of the yolk so this is the yolk we can see and the area opaca is expanded over the yolk surface as an extra embryonic membrane so it will generate the extra embryonic membrane so extra embryonic membrane is getting generated from the area opaca and that contains extra embryonic ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and the area opaca is the area around the developing embryo so the developing embryo is located at the central area. So we can say this is the central area and here is the embryo. So the developing embryo is located at the central area of the blastodisc. And uh, blastodisc is the embryo forming portion of an egg that usually appears as a small disc on the upper surface of the yolk mass. So initially the coelom is continuous between the embryonic and extra embryonic region. So this is the um, coelom area. So we can see this is the coelom. This is the extra embryonic coelom part. So we can see that the coelom is continuous between the embryonic and extra embryonic region because this is the embryonic region. Uh, yes, uh, so this is the embryonic region and this is the extra embryonic coelom that is between the embryonic region and extra embryonic region. Okay, so now we will see the notes here. So in cheek from the time of gastrulation onwards the outer area opaca expands over the surface of the yolk as an extra embryonic membrane. So it consists of extra embryonic ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. The developing embryo is located at the central area of blastodisc. Initially the coelom is continuous between the embryonic and extra embryonic regions next is formation of yolk sac so we will see how yolk sac is formed here so the inner extra embryonic layer that is composed of splanchnic mesoderm blood forming tissue and endoderm so that is called the yolk sac so this is the yolk sac we can see that this is the yolk sac here this is the yolk sac this is the brown part brown membrane is the yolk sac so basically this is the inner extra embryonic layer so the outer extra embryonic layer is this one that is the green one and inner extra embryonic layer is the brown one so this is the inner extra embryonic layer and it is composed of 
splanchnic mesodon blood forming tissue and endodon and this is called the yolk sac so for the sake of your information one thing i require to mention that mesoderm is split into two parts splanchnic mesoderm and somatic mesoderm and splanchnic mesoderm is the inner layer that remains adjacent to the endoderm and yolk sac whereas somatic uh, mesoderm is the outer layer that remains adjacent to the ectoderm okay so now yolk sac is formed so yolk sac gradually surrounds the entire yolk mass because this is the yolk this yellow part is the yolk mass and this yolk sac here we can see so this yolk sac is surrounding the entire yolk mass gradually and serves as the digestive organ so it becomes digestive organ the yolk is used as food by the embryo the endoderm of the yolk sac secretes enzymes which break the yolk into diffusible substances these substances are carried by the blood vessels we can see that number of blood vessels are here so these are blood vessels we can see so these substances are carried by the blood vessels and finally to the heart so from the heart these are conveyed to different parts of the embryo so now we will see the notes here so formation of yolk sac now the inner extra embryonic layer which is composed of splanchnic mesoderm blood forming tissue and endoderm is called yolk sac this gradually surrounds the entire yolk mass and serves as a digestive organ the yolk is used as food by the embryo the endoderm of the yolk sac secretes enzymes which break the yolk into diffusible substances these substances are carried by the blood vessels and finally to the heart from the heart these are conveyed to the different parts of the embryo so next we will see the formation of amnion and chorion now the outer extra embryonic layer so that is the green part that is the outer extra embryonic layer it consists of uh, somatic mesoderm and ectoderm and it is called chorion so we can say this is called chorion now during the third day a fold of the chorion starts so here we can see this is the fold here it is appearing now a fold of chorion starts to cover the anterior end of the embryo so this is the embryo we can see so this is the anterior part of embryo this is the posterior part of embryo right and a fold of the chorion is starting to cover the anterior end of the embryo so this is the fold here and a corresponding fold also grows from the posterior so here we can see one more fold is there at the posterior end of the embryo okay so these two folds these two folds then fuse in the middle so here the folds are fused in the middle we can see to form two complete membranes covering the embryo and now the outer is still being called the chorion and the inner is be is it is called amnion so outer is chorion and inner is the amnion so here we can see the green part that is the outer part that is chorion and the inner part that is the brown part so that is amnion here so we will see the notes here now formation of amnion and chorion the amnion and chorion are the two extra embryonic membranes which develop together so amnion is a membrane covering the embryo and housing it like a bag it separates the embryo from the immediate contact with the environment now between the embryo and the amnion there is a space that is called amniotic cavity so we have seen here the space this is the amniotic cavity we can see here this is the space here 
okay so between the embryo and the amnion there is a space that is called amniotic cavity it contains amniotic fluid that is a saline solution the amnion and amniotic fluid protect the developing embryo from desiccation and also equalize the pressure against the embryo by physical forces now amniotic fluid acts as a buffer so it acts as a buffer and gives protection to the embryo from any kind of shock so addition of the embryo to the amniotic wall is prevented by the movement of the amniotic fluid the outer extraembryonic layer consists of a somatic mesoderm and ectoderm and is called the corian so during the third day a fold of the corian starts to cover the anterior end of the embryo and a corresponding fold also grows from the posterior so these folds fuse in the middle to form two complete membranes that covering the uh, embryo now the outer still being called the corian and the inner being called the amnion next we will see the formation of allantois so we will see the formation of allantois so this is allantois you can see here this is the sac like structure that is allantois now the allantois consists of an inner layer of endoderm covered by splanchnic mesoderm so it grows out from the hindgut so here is the hindgut in the embryo so this allantois is growing out from the hindgut now so it then it it is coming from the hindgut into the extra embryonic coelom because we know that this is the extra embryonic coelom this is also extra embryonic coelom so this allantois is growing out from the hindgut into the extra embryonic coelom and expands to fuse with the under surface of the corian because this is the corian we know and these allantois is going to be fused with the under surface of the corian here although the distal part of the allantois expands so here we can see this part is expanding but it remains connected with the hindgut by a narrow allantoic stalk so we can see that the allantoic stalk is this so this is the narrow allantoic stalk and via this stalk this allantois is getting connected with the embryo and now we will see the notes here so the allantois consists of an inner layer of endoderm covered by splanchnic mesoderm so it grows out from the hindgut into the extra embryonic coelom and expands to fuse with the under surface of corian although the distal part of the allantois expands it remains connected with the hindgut by a narrow allantoic stalk the allantois serves two functions first it acts as an excretory receptacle in which uric acid accumulates so it collects the excretory products from the embryo and in that case this is the uric acid it also acts as the respiratory organ of the embryo because it supplies oxygen to the embryo it also helps to absorb a large quantity of calcium from the egg shell so this allantois it absorbs a large quantity of calcium from the egg shell so this absorbed calcium is utilized by the embryo for the formation of bones so these absorbed calcium these are utilized by the embryo for bone formation the egg shell by losing calcium becomes thin and delicate and thus it facilitates the hatching process